Hello again. I'm back with another video of how to install Spark on Windows. So these steps are the same for Windows 7, 8.1 and 10. So you should be able to install Spark on any of these windows without any issues. So without much further ado, let's get started. So let's quickly talk about the basic requirements or prerequisites. The first requirement is to have Hadoop if you want to run it on the cluster. Otherwise, if you want to run it locally, then Spark should be fine. But I prefer to have Hadoop installed. And if you want to install Hadoop, please follow the steps uh, from any of these videos that are uh, showcased right now. Just click on that and you should be able to follow the steps and install Hadoop. So once you are done, uh, come back to this page and download the specific version of Spark, which is compatible with your uh, Hadoop version. So as you can see here, so Spark is uh, pre-built for specific Hadoop versions. Uh, I have installed Hadoop 2.9.2, uh, so I went ahead and downloaded this particular version of Spark. So make, make sure that you install or download the correct version of Spark before proceeding further. Okay, so once that is done, uh, third one is to uh, have the winutils.exe. Again, uh, this is not going to be shipped with the specific Hadoop version or the Spark version. Uh, you have to build it. And again, one of the videos which I showcased previously has the steps on how to get that. And I provide the link also in this video on how to download winutils.exe from my Google Drive. So as you can see here, I have Spark 240 bin Hadoop27.tz. So what we are going to do is, uh, I've already extracted that with 7-zip. You can also right click on it, install 7-zip, right, and extract through that. So again, the steps of installing 7-zip, installing Java, everything is covered in uh, one of the two Hadoop videos which I which I showcased previously. So make sure you don't miss any of those steps. Okay. So once you have uh, extracted it, just copy the extracted folder into your C drive. So I have extracted the tar of uh, that spark and uh, just copied it to the C drive uh, 240. So this is going to be the structure of it. Okay, so once you are done with it, uh, a few steps here go to your uh, edit system environment variables because we need to set uh, spark home go to the environment variables okay so you need to click on new you need to click on new uh, and uh, put a variable called spark home and the path of it okay spark home and see spark 240 and once you are done Go back to the path variable and add it to the path. So as you can see, semicolon C spark 240 slash bin. Okay. So once you are done with it, uh, the second thing is to make sure you have winutils.exe which is very very important without that uh, you won't be able to ex uh, execute the spark binaries itself okay so let's go back to my c drive here so as you can see i have hadoop 292 within that i'll go to the bin and within bin uh, uh, i have winutils.exe so if you don't have hadoop and you don't have time to do that what i suggest is create uh, winutils directory under C and just copy this from the link that is shown below, right? And go back and put that path into your system variables as Hadoop home, okay? And point your uh, C winutils directory which contains your winutils.exe. Okay, so I'm not going to change my path because my 
uh, Hadoop bin location has the bin utils.exe. Okay, so now we are done with installation of uh, Spark. So next, let's go back and uh, test our uh, installation. Go to the command. I'm going to run with the uh, administrator privileges. Okay, so here you can type spark shell I'm sorry spark hyphen shell so this is going to open a, a scala command line for you so again if you want to develop full-fledged uh, Scala programs. Uh, what I suggest is go back, download Scala MSI installer and install it because you are going to interact or write programs for Spark mainly in Scala, Java, Python. So as you can see our Spark shell has been initialized, the Spark context has been initialized. So let's go back and enter this command. Park range with column status. Congrats. Dot show. So if your Spark is set up properly, you should see this uh, message printed up. Okay, so as you can see, we have that uh, same thing printed up. Now let's go back and uh, execute some more commands. Let's exit the Spark shell, colon Q. You can also execute uh, your Spark shell in local mode with a single thread. Let's also see if we are going to execute that. Okay, so as you can see, we are able to run our Spark shell in our local environment with one thread. Let's quit this. Let's go to a Spark and uh, using the run example, let's execute uh, Spark Pi. Okay, and see the output of it. Now let's execute run example Spark Pi. So as you can see, our Spark job has been submitted. And here you can see the output of the program. Pi is roughly 3.14. Let me mark it down. So this is our output from our Pi program. Okay, so you can also test out other examples which are located in the examples directory. Okay, so as you can see, we have executed uh, our Spark program executed sample code and uh, before you go I'd like to tell you one important information I've also tied up with Simply Learn and Edureka to bring discounts on courses and uh, live lessons on Big Data, Spark, Python and other courses so these discounts or cashback they range between 20 to 30 percent and I provide the links in this video description along with the period of validity make sure to 
check those out if you're interested. I've also tied up with Amazon and provided few links in the video description. You can check out those as well. So you can navigate, click on those links, navigate or search for your favorite product purchase. So as you know, pro producing these videos, they take a lot of time, uh, my personal resources. And finally, if you like this video, make sure to share the video link to your friends and also don't miss out to subscribe on this channel.